Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a sneak peek of the new plastic iPhone. So this is just the back shell of the phone. Now as you can see, it actually integrates all of the uh, chassis components as well. So we don't have our battery or the display or anything like that. We just have the chassis components like the EM shield, the frame for the buttons, and the digitizer. And we even have the lenses for the camera and LED flash. But let's go ahead and take a look at this design. So the interesting thing here is that we have an all plastic design as opposed to a metal or glass design as we've seen with other phones. Now this will probably, or with other iPhones, this will probably succeed the iPhone 4 and 4S in the lineup. So the iPhone 4 and 4S were glass, which were shatter prone. Uh, and as you can see, it's also quite a bit thinner than those phones. Uh, but this is going to, when we get the iPhone 5S, we'll probably have the iPhone 5S, the iPhone 5, and then this phone. We're not sure what it's going to be named at this point. But this is sort of like a merger of the iPhone 3GS, as you can see, the, uh, the short-lived white version of the iPhone 3GS. And then we have the iPod Touch. So if you merge those together, you get something kind of similar to that. So again, this is a 4-inch screen, which is interesting. So we go from a 3.5-inch on the low end to a 4-inch, uh, presumably, retina display. Uh, as you can see, it's similar design, but not as thin as the iPod Touch. So you have similar ports here, such as your speaker grills, your lightning port. We do have those two screws at either end. We have our headphone jack. And of course, since this is a phone, we have our mouthpiece right next to it. Now, if we compare that to the iPhone 5, you can see it's kind of similar in overall thinness. It's not quite as thin. It's a little thicker. It's also a little wider than the iPhone 5, which is kind of hard to illustrate here. So let me see if I can situate this a little bit better. So as you can see, it's a little bit wider than the iPhone 5 and presumably the iPhone 5S, which is likely to share the same design. So you can see down here again, headphone jack. Our, our microphone, which is much larger here than the small microphone here. We have our lightning port and two screws, as well as those uh, speaker grills here. So quite a few more of them here. Now, what you'll see here is that we're missing the buttons or cutouts for the buttons. So if you look inside, you'll see them. So we have that sort of volume cutout here. These are the volume buttons. They're kind of pill-shaped, very similar to the ones on the iPod Touch. We also have a cutout for the volume or the mute switch. Uh, pretty much similar design, similar layout. Now the buttons themselves won't be metal, they'll be plastic and they'll be color coded to the body of the phone. Same with the sleep wake button up here, you can see uh, right here it's also pill shaped. And uh, if you look on the other side, you'll see the SIM tray, also with a hole indicating where the SIM tray will be. So the SIM tray will also be situated here, presumably also a nano SIM. Now on the back we'll see our iPhone logo with that new thinner font. So if you look at the fonts for the iPhone 5 and the new iPhone plastic edition, whatever you want to call this, you can see it's a little thinner font probably to go along with the new iOS 7 aesthetic. We have our black Apple logo, which is actually very similar to what Apple has been doing with recent product redesigns like the Airport products, the Airport Extreme and Time Capsule. Up here you'll see the lens for the camera. So you can see it's also anti-reflective. Uh, we do have our lens for the LED flash, so it's just a single LED flash. We also have our microphone. This is very similar to the layout for the iPhone 5, as well as the iPod Touch, fifth generation. Now, of course, the big story here is that we lose the beautiful design of the iPhone 5. So we don't have that beautiful mirrored chamfer, the glass trim pieces, the all aluminum unibody construction, as well as that very thin design. Uh, so we have a pretty simple plastic shape, very glossy. Uh, it has a very nice form factor to it, just like the iPhone 5. feels very comfortable to hold, a nice square edge to grab onto, and grip is not too small, so you can grab it off the table uh, pretty comfortably. And it just handles very nicely. It's a, it's a very comfortable size, and it's um, a very nice quality plastic. So it's a pretty simple design. It's all unibody plastic. It's not like the old one, the 3G and 3GS, where you had the metal frame. Uh, so it's a little different, a little cleaner overall. I actually really like it. It's really much thinner than that as you can see. And of course you can see other details here such as that uh, chrome ring around the camera lens and the flash. Uh, you don't see that here with the uh, plastic case. And again if you look at the bottom you just see a lot more work has gone into the iPhone design. So you have all these micro drilled holes. We have the chrome rings around the uh, lightning port and the headphone jack. So a lot of that is gone of course with the plastic phone. Now just to take a close look at the inside chassis you can see how everything is mounted in here. So you can see the frame for the lightning port, uh, the frame for the SIM tray, frame for all the buttons, the frame for the digitizer. Up here you can see we have these little temporary covers for the camera as well as LED flash. Uh, same with the cutouts for the bu volume buttons and uh, mute switch. 
Now assuming this is the official Apple iPhone shell, I'm pretty impressed overall by what I see. I like the thin, lightweight form factor, and I really like the design. It's simple, of course. Not a lot of detail here, not a lot of parts uh, to highlight. Certainly not as beautiful as the iPhone 5 with that aluminum design and glass, or even the iPhone 4 and 4S with that uh, aluminum and glass design. But it's a little more durable, so you, when you drop this, you're less likely to shatter the back panel or dent and scratch the metal, uh, because plastic is a little more forgiving. So this is foam is probably a little easier to live with, at least if you want to go caseless. And of course, you also get multiple colors, so if that's important to you, you do have an option to pick a color other than white or black. And you get a 4-inch phone. So you go from a 3.5-inch phone to a 4-inch phone, which presumably will also have a retina display, just like the iPod Touch and the iPhone 5. Uh, so you get a big spec upgrade there, and you probably will see better internal specs and a better camera, both forward-facing, so perhaps a full HD FaceTime camera, and perhaps a 5 megapixel all the folks in the camera on the back will see. Uh, so you do get better internal specs, so you get a better experience for the price. I do have to send a big shout out and a big thank you to Sony Dixon who supplied this for me. I've known Sony for quite a while now, and he's kind of the leader in terms of leaking Apple goods these days. He has a lot of connections in the supply chain, supply chain, so you probably want to follow him. So I'll post a link in the description below if you want to check him out, and he'll keep you updated on all the latest Apple news that he is on the forefront of. So that's going to do for me guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.